Perhaps there's no other era in American history as rich in tales of myth, legend, and daring exploits as the pioneering days of the Wild West. This period, spanning from 1865 to 19, brought forth a diverse cast of characters, including outlaws, lawmen, cowboys, American Indians, miners, ranchers, and quite a few women with unconventional reputations. Every woman who ventured into the Wild West was a heroine in her own right, but we're about to introduce you to some of the more well-known and infamous women from this captivating period. Our list kicks off with Mary Fields, and you'll quickly see that a spirit of defiance ran strong in her family. Mary Fields defeated wolves and killed men with a single blow. Stagecoach Mary Fields spent her early years as a slave, but when the 13th Amendment was approved, she worked as a laborer for a church in Cascade, where she undertook difficult physical labor and made 120-mile supply runs to Helena La T, becoming the first black woman postal worker in history. Fields had her hardest challenge to date, while on one of her supply runs, a pack of hungry wolves. The wolves pursued her horses as they followed her along the trail. She used her shotgun and handgun to fend off the wolves. One of the most courageous frontiers women ever was this 200-pound, six-foot-tall black woman. In order to fight, Cathay Williams enlisted as a man in the Civil War. Williams resisted being dissuaded from serving her country because of her gender or color. Williams wanted to fight on the front lines during the Civil War, but at the time, women were only permitted to work on the front lines as cooks, laundresses, or nurses. She assumed the identity of a male, posing as William Cathay in order to engage in actual combat. As a result, she was soon accepted for service. She did this in order to become the first African-American woman to join the army. Despite being admitted to the hospital multiple times, nobody ever learned of her secret. By becoming U.S. Deputy Marshals, Mamie Fawcett and S. M. Bursch scoffed against stereotypes. S.M. Bursch and Mamie Fawcett, two strong and independent women from Oklahoma, startled the state by being named United States Deputy Marshals in 1898. The article announcing their new functionality is commendable. That part reads as follows. For a woman to choose a career as a professional thief in the most civilized part of the country would be quite strange. That's all the more true when she chooses to join the battlefield in the worst territory of the Alliance. The criminals of Oklahoma and the Indian Territory, the county where these two girls, because they are young girls, must operate, are of the most desperate and dangerous class. More federal officers are killed in a year than the rest of the country combined. So it seems that these girls possess a medal of superior quality to be willing to take on such tasks. Both women executed the same arrest warrants as any other man working in the Indian Territory. Eleanor Dumont hunts down the person who ruined her life. No one knows exactly where Eleanor Dumont came from. Her unique accent made some French guesses, while others assumed she was from New Orleans. Regardless of where this mysterious woman came from, she came to San Francisco in 1849 and worked as a car dealer. A few years later, she moved to Nevada City, where she opened her own luxury casino, serving champagne instead of whiskey and not letting any dirty, unclean men in. She wanted a respectable place with respectable people. Her resounding success led her to buy a farm and start raising cattle. She meets a man named Jack McKnight, whom she thinks she can trust, and leaves her property to him to manage. Unfortunately, McKnight was a scammer who took all the money and left her in debt. Not content to sit idly by, Dumont decided to go after McKnight. When she caught up with him, she killed him with two shotgun blasts. Her life never recovered from McKnight's betrayal, but at least she got her revenge. Laura Bullion, the thorny rose of the Wild West, is an outlaw. After being born into an outlaw family around 1876, Laura Bullion naturally followed suit. After a difficult youth, she eventually joined the Wild Bunch, best known for producing Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, and joined the notorious Outlaws Gang. She roamed the countryside, 
robbing trains and scamming until she was caught. She is said to be tough and stubborn, which eventually earned her the nickname Rose of Thorns. Pearl Hart has voiced the call to fight for women's rights. Her actions may not be all that admirable, but Pearl Hart's feminist stance runs counter to the male-dominated Wild West. When she was young, she was inspired by Annie Oakley and left her children in Canada while moving to Arizona so she could experience the great outdoors. She began to experience financial difficulties, which forced her to turn to a life of crime. When arrested, she boldly asserted at the trial, I will not agree to be tried under a law in which my gender has no say. It's a statement that has become a rallying call for feminists around the world. Bridget Biddy Mason helps the poor even in death. Bridget Biddy Mason began life as an illiterate slave, but quickly became a successful businessman and a major contributor to social activities. After winning her freedom in court in 1856, she moved to Los Angeles with her daughters and found work as a nurse and midwife. She worked for a financially well-off man, and 10 years after winning her freedom, she bought her own land for $250, making her one of the first black women own land in Los Angeles. A very savvy businesswoman, she sold part of the land and built rental space on top of the rest. Over the years, her fortune began to increase until she had more than $300,000. Instead of keeping all that money for herself, she generously donated to charity and on a mission to help the needy. One of his greatest achievements was helping to found the first African Methodist Church in 1872 which continued to help people long after his death. Esther Hobart Morris, Campaigning for Women's Suffrage in Wyoming Esther Hobart Morris successfully brought suffrage to women in Wyoming. While this has been controversial in recent years, the story goes that Morris was the main driving force behind the electoral law and played a key role in its passage. You might think that bringing women's suffrage to the entire state would be enough for one, Morris' legacy was further cemented when she became the first woman in Wyoming to serve as Justice Peace. Big Nosed Kate freed Doc Holliday by nearly burning down a town. Big Nosed Kate, despite her somewhat unfortunate nickname, defied expectations and found great success in her profession as a sex worker. Born as Mary Catherine Hironi, she quickly earned a reputation for her resilience and strength. During the late 1800s, she wandered through the American Midwest, attributing her choice of work to her preference for independence, refusing to tie herself to any one man or dwelling. Her most famous association was with the renowned Doc Holliday. During one pivotal moment, when Holliday was incarcerated for a self-defense killing, Kate hatched a daring plan to secure his freedom. She ignited an old building, risking the entire town, as most of its residents rushed to combat the blaze. While the town was distracted, Kate held the guard overseeing Holiday at gunpoint, liberating her lover and enabling their escape. This audacious act is one of her most notable exploits. Lottie Dino's ascent to success was paved by her mastery of gambling, a skill she learned from her father. In her youth, she accompanied him on trips abroad, observing his prowess at some of the world's most prestigious casinos. Tragically, after her father's demise during the Civil War, Dino found herself responsible for managing the family plantation alongside her mother and sister. Sent on a journey to seek a suitable husband, Dino traversed the country and crossed paths with Johnny Golden. He persuaded her to join him in a life of gambling, although their paths eventually diverged. Wherever her travels took her, Dino cultivated a reputation as a formidable gambler, gaining recognition for her prowess. She engaged in high-stakes games against notable figures of the Wild West, even crossing paths with the infamous Doc Holliday. Later in life, she retired from the world of gambling, taking on a new role as a founding member of St. Luke's Episcopal Church in Deming, Texas. Susan Doc Susie's Anderson devoted 47 years of her life to the practice of medicine. Some individuals truly go the extra mile in aiding those in need, and Susan Anderson stands as a profound source of inspiration in this regard. Born in 1870 in Indiana, her deep-seated desire to assist others surfaced at a young age. 
She pursued a medical education, embarking on a journey to establish her very own medical practice. Her reputation took flight when she achieved a remarkable feat. She successfully preserved a minor's arm after another physician had deemed amputation the only option. Doc Susie persistently practiced medicine for a span exceeding 47 years, eventually retiring at the age of 84. She gained widespread recognition within her community, earning the affectionate sobriquet Doc Susie due to her unwavering commitment and diligent craftsmanship in the field. Angelina Eberly played a role in sparking the Archive War, a unique historical event where few women can claim to have initiated a conflict. In 1839, she settled in Austin, Texas, where she managed the Eberly House alongside her husband, Jacob Eberly. Remarkably, her residence became a local hub, often hosting prominent officials passing through the town. Tragically, her husband passed away in 1841, leaving her to run the establishment independently. Then, in 1842, the directive came for Thomas Smith and Eli Chandler to transport certain public documents from Austin back to Washington. Angelina Eberly strongly opposed the idea of the government relocating these archives to Washington. In an audacious act, she fired a cannon in her town to alert the local residents. This provocative act of defiance set in motion the Archive War, an intriguing chapter in history that ultimately resulted in the archives remaining permanently in Austin. Sarah Bomer, an era that's great Western due to her towering 6'2 stature, serves as a strong example of resilient women everywhere. In the midst of the Mexican-American War, she accompanied her husband on the battlefield, taking on roles as a cook and laundress. The story goes that even in the midst of combat, she displayed unwavering courage. When things became chaotic and a tray was shot right out of her hand, she refused to retreat with the other women. Throughout the ongoing battles, she assisted in any way she was permitted, primarily by loading cartridges and aiding wounded soldiers off the battlefield. If given the chance, you could bet she would have picked up a gun and joined the fight. Upon her passing in 1866, she received a burial with full military honors, a testament to her extraordinary bravery in service. Margaret Heffern in Borland had an exceptional knack for managing an immense cattle operation. Her life story is a testament to her remarkable resilience. She initially married Harrison Dunbar, but he tragically passed away soon after the birth of their first daughter. A few years later, she married Milton Hardy, only to face another loss when he succumbed to cholera, leaving her with two additional children. Margaret's next marriage was to Alexander Borland, and the couple welcomed four more children into their family before. Unfortunately, Borland also passed away. During the same year, Margaret endured the devastating loss of several of her children and grandchildren in a widespread yellow fever epidemic. It was undoubtedly an incredibly challenging period for Margaret, but she refused to be daunted by the adversity. In the face of these hardships, Margaret exhibited extraordinary strength by assuming control of Borland's cattle enterprise, ultimately steering it to remarkable success. By 1873, she had amassed a herd of over 10,000 cattle. In fact, it's worth noting that Margaret is celebrated as the only woman known to have led a cattle drive. In the final year of her life, she led her remaining family members, along with their cattle and trail hands, to Wichita, Kansas, before regrettably passing away shortly after their arrival. Charlie Parkhurst Life was no cakewalk for women in the rugged Wild West, so this exceptional stagecoach driver decided to spend the majority of her life as a man. Born in 1812, Parkhurst lived well into her 60s, despite being a rugged, one-eyed, tough guy known for hard drinking and tobacco chewing. She made a living driving stagecoaches for Wells Fargo and the California Stage Company, a challenging and not particularly safe occupation. Under her concealed identity, Parkhurst even registered as a voter, potentially making her the first American woman to cast a ballot. Afterward, she spent the remainder of her life tending to cattle and raising chickens until her passing in 1879. It was only then that her true identity came to light, surprising many of her friends. Remember to hit that subscribe button and like the video if you're loving the content.
Your support means the world to us.